there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today, I'm going to tell you about four small publishers that I love. The big presses get all of the attention and the marketing dollars, but the small presses are putting some really incredible work out there that I want to introduce to you guys. There are four, and they're all quite different from each other. One is a translation press that does exclusively literature in translation. One does a little bit of everything. One is an LGBTQIA plus press, and one is the one I'm looking to get into that I haven't read anything from yet, but is on my radar. That is a fusion, it, it's, that, just watch. So for each publisher, I'm just going to give you a few quick titles that either I've read or I'm interested in. And these won't be full reviews, just something to get you interested. There may be full reviews of these books further down the line in other review videos and things, but I'm rambling. Oof. First is one of my first indie press loves. It's Deep Vellum Publishing. They're based in Dallas in the Deep Ellum neighborhood, so you can see where they got the name, and they publish literature and translation. And what I love about their list is that it's a completely wide, diverse range of everything. They don't get stuck in one language. They don't get stuck even in one region of the world. They publish Korean authors and Mexican authors and South American authors and Moroccan authors and authors from the Middle East and just a little bit of everything. I get the feeling that that diversity is a point of pride for them and at least half of their authors are women. And if once you throw in the translators, I'm pretty sure at least half of the translators are women as well. Deep Vellum published Seeing Red by Lena Moraine, translated by Megan McDowell. It's a semi-autobiographical novel, which is a weird space, I know, but it's about a woman that moves from South America to New York and she has a medical condition where she knows that she can go blind at any time and she does. And it's in a curtain of red that she's the last thing she sees. And it's about her experiences with that. And just the way it's written gripped me. It was just, oh, it, it stuck with me incredibly. Another book they published is Banthology, Stories from Banned Nations. It's an anthology of short stories that was commissioned after the so-called Muslim ban in the United States. And there's one story for each country affected. And it deals with the themes of displacement and migration and all of that stuff in each story. As with any anthology, I liked some stories better than others, but the themes and the thoughts and the just everything behind it has also stuck with me. The second publisher is Nine Star Press. It is an LGBTQIA owned and managed publishing house. They publish mostly romance and it's mostly non-heterosexual pairings. There's uh, trans protagonists, non-binary along with your FFMM, and every other combination and menage included in that. There's a wide range, not only in that sense, but in, in the stories. Like there are some where there's explicit sex and there are some where there's barely any kissing and everything in between. The great thing is if you go on their website and if you go to any book's individual page, at the bottom there's a whole list and you can look up anything you might be interested in, whether it's a what the pairing is, or if the characters are cisgender or queer gender, or any content warnings, like if you want to avoid violence or character death or some other things, they will let you know down the bottom so you know what you're getting into. My favorite book that I've read by far from Nine Star is Coffee Boy by Austin Chant. Chant is a trans author and he writes a story of a trans character who is getting into the workplace and having to deal with people who aren't used to working with a trans person and what that involves. And of course he finds some love, so yeah, it's... I love Austin Chant. Austin Chan is wonderful. Another book I like by them is To Seek and to Find by Tamarin Aridani. In the genre of BDSM romance, it seems like there's always a tendency to go to the extreme, you know, very difficult to bondage or, you know, people being suspended or just really the out there edges of things. And what I love about this book, which is about two male characters who meet at a club and start having a I'll say temporary relationship while they figure out if this is something they want to continue. And this is a series, so it goes on from here with the same pairing. Is that the, one of the characters, I think it's Kyle, is into bondage, but is the most sedate bondage I've ever seen in a book. Like he's just lying down on a flat surface and there's some rope being wrapped around his torso and that's it. Like there's, there's very light, but seeing how that affects him and what that means for him and the emotional connection he has with the person who is doing 
the rope work. That was something I'd never seen before and I really liked watching that and the relationship in its progression. Another thing I like about Nine Star is that a bunch of the authors are own voices, so that's always a plus. The next press is one that I just found recently and they've been around for a while though. It's Soft Skull Press and their logo is an ant. I love it. Even when they send out stuff, apparently the tape that they put over has ants crawling all over it. I just think it's great. Anyway, uh, they're based in New York City and they publish a little bit of everything. So from their website, it says books that engage art, culture, and current events in new and radical ways. We publish every genre. So cool. The book that introduced me to them was the recent release the Lonesome Bodybuilder by Motoya Yukiko, translated by Asa Yoneda. I'll link to a couple of videos where I talk about this book. I really liked it and it's been getting some end of year buzz, which I am very happy for. I have a bunch of their books on my TBR though. There's an upcoming release called Muhammad 40 Introductions by I think it's Michael Muhammad Knight and I've been, I'm looking forward to that one. And some of their past releases that are on my TBR radar are The Amputee's Guide to Sex by Jillian Weiss. That's a poetry collection that's own voices, which is about what it says in the title. The other book that I've been looking forward to for a while is Tower Dog by Douglas Scott Delaney. It talks about, I think they're called linesmen, the, um, the people who go up the high tension power lines in order to do repairs and things. And it is a very dangerous job that can be deadly. And he talks about his experience doing that. And the last publisher I want to talk to you about is Bellevue Literary Press. And I haven't read anything from them yet, but they have been on my radar and I need to get to it. Again, from their website, it says, they're devoted to publishing literary fiction and nonfiction at the intersection of arts and sciences, because we believe that science and humanities are natural companions for understanding the human experience which I'm for. You guys probably know by now I'm a medical interpreter and this is definitely my sort of thing. And they have a lot of books that look interesting. Right now I have my eye on Under Stories by Tim Horvath and Keep Out of Reach of Children, Race Syndrome, Aspirin, and the Politics of Public Health by Mark A. Lergent. The one disappointment for me is that it was harder to find women authors in their catalog than men. So there we have it, four small publishers that I like, well, three that I like and one that I'm pretty sure I'm really gonna like. There are so many great small and indie publishers out there that I can't get to all of them in just one video, but what are some of your favorites? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.